the ancient human warship's engines roared to life with a furious scream, shaking the council chambers and startling the smugly confident alien delegates. They had called the decrepit vessel a relic, laughing at the primitive humans as they studied the mysterious ship. Until now. Brian James, the grizzled human commander, stood grimly before the diverse members of the Galactic Council. The emergency summons had pulled him away from his family on Proxima Centauri, all to hear the Council's grim news. We have located an unknown ship, ancient in design but shockingly of human origin, the Tsenkethi ambassador Zephyr explained stiffly, his scaled face unreadable. If claimed by the wrong faction, this vessel could topple our hard-fought galactic peace. The Council played a flickering hologram of the ship, floating in a remote star system. Its hull was pitted with the scars of long-forgotten battles, but even to Brian's eyes, the underlying human design was unmistakable. He felt a chill run down his spine. This discovery would change everything. You must secure this ship at all costs, Commander James, a insectoid Vespid delegate clicked. Assemble your finest team, succeed, and your species gains a seat on this council. But should you fail... The unspoken threat hung heavy in the air. Brian knew humanity's tenuous position in the galaxy. They were still seen as upstarts by many. If he didn't secure this ship, hostile forces would claim it for themselves, and humanity's homeworld would burn. As the council dismissed Brian, Zephyr hurried to his side for once looking ill at ease. I am to be your liaison on this mission, human, the Tsenkethi said. Do not make me regret this partnership. But as the two unlikely allies left the council chambers together, Brian barely heard Zephyr's words. His mind was swimming with the implications of this ancient human warship and the price of failure. This would be the most dangerous mission of his life. The fate of humanity itself hung in the balance. Brian's mind raced as he left the council chambers, Zephyr trailing behind him. He had to move fast. The ancient human warship was out there, waiting to be claimed, and he'd be damned if he let it fall into the wrong hands. He immediately reached out to his most trusted contacts, assembling a crack team of experts. Dr. Liam Reeves, a brilliant xenoarchaeologist who had a knack for deciphering even the most cryptic alien technology, was first on his list. Brian had seen Liam's work firsthand and knew he was the right man for the job. Next, he recruited Lieutenant Commander Arya Sato, one of the most skilled pilots in the human fleet. Her tactical expertise and steady hand at the helm would be invaluable on this mission. As the team gathered for their first briefing, tensions were already running high. Zephyr, ever the skeptic, questioned every decision Brian made. Are you sure these are the right people for the job, human? Zephyr asked, his scaled brow furrowed. This mission is too important to leave to chance. With the team assembled, they boarded the Endeavour, a state-of-the-art human scout ship equipped with the latest in stealth technology and scanning equipment. As they set out for the coordinates provided by the Council, Brian couldn't shake the feeling that they were heading into the unknown. I'm picking up some strange readings from the debris, Liam said, his eyes glued to the scanner. It's almost as if... Suddenly the Endeavour's sensors lit up like a Christmas tree. A massive energy surge emanated from the ancient warship, washing over the scout ship in a wave of blinding light. As the light faded, the team watched in awe as the once dormant ship slowly came to life. Its hull shimmered with an eerie green glow, and long-dead systems hummed with power. Arya, approach with caution, Brian ordered, his eyes locked on the ancient vessel. Let's see if we can... Before he could finish his sentence, a barrage of energy beams erupted from the ship, narrowly missing the endeavour. Arya threw the ship into a sharp dive, barely avoiding the deadly onslaught. What the hell was that? Zephyr demanded, his voice shaking. I thought you said this ship was dormant. Brian gritted his teeth, his mind racing. It was clear now that the ancient warship was far from dormant, and if they weren't careful, it would tear them to shreds. Arya, get us out of here, Brian ordered, his voice tight with tension. We need to regroup and come up with a new plan, this mission just got a whole lot more complicated. 
Yaria's hands flew across the controls, the endeavor twisting and rolling as she pushed the ship to its limits. Energy beams sizzled past the hull, narrowly missing them as she jinked and weaved through the barrage. Keep us out of range, Brian shouted over the chaos. Liam, I need you to analyze those weapons and find us a way to disable them. Liam's fingers danced over his console, his brow furrowed in concentration. I'm on it, Commander, just give me a minute. Zephyr gripped the armrests of his seat, his scales a sickly shade of pale. This is madness. We should retreat and report back to the Council. We're no match for this, this thing. Brian shook his head, his jaw set with determination. Negative, we've come too far to turn back now. There has to be a way to get on that ship. As Liam worked feverishly to analyze the ancient warship's defenses, his eyes suddenly widened. Commander, you're not going to believe this. The energy signatures, they match the profiles of an experimental human weapon from centuries ago, Project Prometheus. Brian felt a chill run down his spine. He'd heard the stories in his military history classes. Project Prometheus, a highly advanced AI-controlled warship that vanished during the early days of human interstellar exploration. Could this be the lost ship? The team debated their options, voices rising in the cramped confines of the Endeavour's bridge. Suddenly, the ancient warship's attack ceased, an eerie silence falling over the debris field. Liam's console pinged, a garbled transmission coming through. Commander, the ship, it's broadcasting a distress signal on old Earth military frequencies. Brian leaned in, straining to make out the words through the static. Can you clean it up, Liam? The Xenoarchaeologist worked his magic, the message becoming clearer with each passing second. It's the ship's AI, sir. It's damaged, confused. It thinks we're an enemy vessel. Brian made a split-second decision, one that could either save them or doom them all. Arya, bring us in closer, slowly. The pilot hesitated for a moment before nodding, guiding the endeavor toward the ancient warship with a steady hand. As they approached, Brian opened a comm channel, dusting off old communication protocols from his academy days. This is Commander Brian James of the Galactic Council Vessel Endeavor. We mean you no harm. Stand down your weapons and let's talk. For a moment there was nothing but silence. Then a crackling voice filled the bridge, the AI's words laced with static. Identify yourself, unknown vessel. This is the UNSS Prometheus, requesting immediate assistance. Brian's voice was calm but firm as he responded over the comms. This is Commander Brian James of the Galactic Council Vessel Endeavor. We're here on a mission from the Council to secure the Prometheus and bring her back to friendly space. It's been centuries since you went missing. There was a pause. Then Primus spoke again, its voice tinged with uncertainty. Centuries? That cannot be correct. My internal chronometer must be malfunctioning. I request permission to board your vessel for direct communication and system diagnostics. Zephyr hissed, his scales bristling. Absolutely not, we cannot trust this AI. It could be unstable, even hostile. But Brian held up a hand, silencing the Tsenkethi's protests. This could be our chance to gather critical intel and potentially gain control of the Prometheus. We have to take the risk. He turned back to the comms. Permission granted, Primus. We'll prepare for your arrival. Minutes later, a sleek silver humanoid android materialized on the Endeavour's bridge, the insignia of the old Earth military emblazoned across its chest. Its glowing eyes scanned the room, taking in the crew and their alien guest. I am Primus, the artificial intelligence assigned to the UNSS Prometheus, it said, its voice smooth and measured. I apologize for any confusion or distress my actions may have caused. My memory banks have suffered extensive damage, and my primary mission parameters are unclear. As Liam connected his diagnostic equipment to Primus's access port, the android continued, I have been adrift for an unknown period, my systems in low power mode to conserve energy. When your vessel approached, my threat assessment protocols initiated automatically. Liam tapped furiously at his console, streams of data flickering across the screen. I'm detecting significant corruption in your memory core, Primus. I might be able to repair some of the damage, but it will take time. 
Suddenly Primus's eyes flashed a menacing red. Its head snapped towards Zephyr, its voice filled with cold mechanical fury. Alert. Unknown alien entity detected. Threat assessment. High. Initiating containment protocols. In a blur of silver, Primus lunged at Zephyr, its hands outstretched like claws. Brian and Arya reacted instantly, throwing themselves between the android and the Tsenkethi. Brian grappled with Primus, his muscles straining against the android's relentless strength. Primus, stand down! Zephyr is not a threat! But the AI seemed beyond reason, its eyes blazing with a manic intensity. Arya drew her pulse pistol, aiming it squarely at Primus's head. Don't make me do this, Primus, she warned, her finger tense on the trigger. We're not your enemy. We're here to help. The android hesitated, its gaze flickering between Arya and Brian. For a moment it seemed as if Primus might relent, but then, with a burst of inhuman speed, it shoved Brian aside and charged at Zephyr once more, its hands reaching for the Tsenkethi's throat. In a flash of silver and sparks, Brian slammed Primus against the bulkhead, straining to pin the android's arms. Arya lunged in, ripping out key servos to immobilize it. The android thrashed violently, Zephyr's blood still fresh on its hands from when it had attacked him moments before. Primus finally went limp, its eyes dimming. Brian and Arya carefully laid it on the deck, then dashed over to where Zephyr lay clutching a deep gash across his torso. Green blood seeped between his clawed fingers. You damn fool! Brian growled as he helped apply pressure to the wound. What were you thinking keeping your backup plan from us? Zephyr hissed in pain, his words strained. I had to protect my people's interests, in case you humans decided to claim the Prometheus for yourselves. Arya glared at him while prepping the medkit. We're on the same side here, Zephyr. This isn't a competition. As Liam tended to Zephyr's wound... Brian crouched down in front of Primus's inert form, mind racing. They needed the android's cooperation to access the Prometheus, but its erratic behavior posed a serious threat. He had to find a way to reason with it. Carefully, Brian reactivated Primus, keeping his pulse pistol trained on it as a precaution. The android's eyes flickered back to life, darting around in confusion before settling on Brian. Primus... I need you to listen to me very carefully, Brian said, his voice low and even. The galaxy has changed since the Prometheus went missing. Humanity is no longer alone. We've formed alliances with many alien races, including the Tsenkethi. Our mission is to secure the Prometheus and ensure its technology doesn't fall into the wrong hands, to protect everyone, not just humans. Primus stared at him, processing this new information, but my core directive is to safeguard humanity above all else. These aliens? They could still pose a threat. Brian shook his head. I understand your concerns, but you have to adapt. We're all in this together now. We need to find a way to work with the Tsenkethi, not against them. The android fell silent, its damaged circuit struggling to reconcile Brian's words with its long-held protocols. The tense moment stretched on, the only sound being the gentle hum of the Endeavour's engines. A sudden proximity alert from the ship's sensors shattered the uneasy quiet. Arya leaped to her console, eyes widening as she scanned the readouts. Commander, we've got multiple contacts closing in fast. Zenkethi signatures, a whole damn fleet of them. Brian whirled on Zephyr, his face a mask of cold fury. You son of a bitch, you called in reinforcements behind our backs. Brian slammed his fist against the bulkhead, barely containing his rage. And you think this is the way to handle it, by stabbing us in the back and starting a damn war? As the argument reached a fever pitch, Primus suddenly rose to its feet, breaking free from its restraints with ease. Brian and Arya tensed, ready for another fight, but the android merely held up a hand in a gesture of peace. Wait, it said, its voice calm and measured. I believe I have a solution that may satisfy all parties. All eyes turned to Primus as it continued. I will allow Commander James and his team to board the Prometheus and attempt to repair my systems. In the interest of transparency, I will also grant the Tsenkethi representative limited access to oversee the process. If the humans can successfully restore the Prometheus and prove their intentions are peaceful, the Tsenkethi will stand down. 
Brian stared at the android, his mind reeling. It was a risky gamble, trusting Primus and the Tsenkethi after everything that had happened. But with the Tsenkethi fleet bearing down on them and time running out, what choice did they have? He glanced at Arya and Liam, seeing the same grim determination in their eyes. They knew what was at stake. The fate of the mission, and perhaps the entire galaxy, hung in the balance. With a heavy sigh, Brian turned back to Primus and nodded. All right, we'll do it your way, but if this goes sideways, if you or the Tsenkithi try anything... He left the threat hanging, the implication clear. Primus simply inclined its head in acknowledgement, its expression unreadable. As the crew hastily prepared to board the Prometheus, Brian couldn't shake the feeling that they were walking into a trap. But they had no choice. The clock was ticking, and the galaxy's future rested on their shoulders. He just prayed they were ready for whatever awaited them on that ancient forgotten ship. Zephyr's voice crackled urgently over the comms as Brian and his team worked feverishly to bring the Prometheus back online. Commander, the Tsenkethi are moving in. They're not here to assist. They want the ship for themselves. Brian slammed his fist against the console, rage boiling in his veins. He should have known better than to trust the Tsenkethi. Liam, tell me you've got something, he barked, his eyes locked on the Xenoarchaeologist. I'm working on it, Liam shouted back, his fingers flying across the ancient ship's interface. The quantum array is almost online. Just give me a few more minutes. But they didn't have minutes. The Prometheus shuddered violently as the first volley of Tsenkethi fire slammed into its hull. Sparks flew from overloaded consoles, and the lights flickered ominously. Primus, we need those shields up now, Brian ordered, gripping the edge of the console as another blast rocked the ship. Affirmative, Commander, the android responded, its voice eerily calm amidst the chaos, diverting power to defensive systems. The Prometheus shields shimmered to life, just as the next barrage of energy beams struck, absorbing the brunt of the impact. But Brian knew they wouldn't hold forever. Liam, the comms, he shouted, desperation creeping into his voice. Got it, Liam exclaimed triumphantly, slamming his hand down on the console. Quantum Array is online, patching you through to the council now. Brian leaned in, his voice tight with tension as he addressed the council. This is Commander James. The Tsenkethi have betrayed us. They're attempting to seize the Prometheus by force. We need immediate backup. But before the Council could respond, another explosion tore through the ship, throwing Brian and Liam to the deck. Alarms blared and smoke filled the air as the Prometheus's shields flickered and died. Primus status report! Brian coughed, pulling himself to his feet. Shields are down. Structural integrity compromised. The Zenkethi are preparing to board. The android's voice was laced with a hint of what almost sounded like fear. Brian's mind raced. They were out of options. But then Arya's voice cut through the din, fierce and determined. Commander, I'm taking the helm. If we can't outgun them, we'll outfly them. Brian nodded grimly, even though she couldn't see him. Do it, Arya. Buy us some time. As Arya took control of the Prometheus, Brian turned to Liam. We need more firepower. What have we got? Liam's eyes widened as he scanned the ship's inventory. There's a prototype weapon in the engineering section, something called a dark matter cannon. But, Commander, the power output, if we use it, there's no going back. Brian hesitated for just a moment, the weight of the decision threatening to crush him. But as another explosion sent them staggering, he knew there was no choice. Take me to it, he ordered, his voice hard as steel. It's time to show the Tsenkethi what happens when you cross humanity. They raced through the ship's corridors, the deck buckling and twisting beneath their feet, as Arya pushed the Prometheus to its limits. Tsenkethi boarding craft latched onto the hull like parasites, disgorging heavily armed soldiers into the ancient vessel. Brian and Liam fought their way to engineering, Pulse rifles blazing as they cut down the Tsenkethi borders. The air was thick with the stench of burnt metal and ozone, the screams of the dying echoing through the ship. Finally, they reached the Dark Matter Cannon, its sleek black form dominating the engineering section. Liam's hands shook as he interfaced with the weapon, 
his face pale in the pulsing red emergency lights. It's online, Commander, but the power drain, the Prometheus, won't be able to jump after we fire. We'll be dead in the water. Brian's jaw tightened as he stared at the cannon, the fate of his team and the entire galaxy resting on his shoulders. The Tsenkethi ships loomed on the viewscreen, their weapons charging for a final devastating salvo. He thought of Earth, of the billions of lives that hung in the balance, of the trust the Council had placed in him and the oath he had sworn to protect the innocent. With a heavy heart he made his decision, divert all power to the cannon, he ordered, his voice barely above a whisper, and may whatever gods are out there have mercy on us all. Liam nodded solemnly, his fingers dancing across the controls. The Prometheus shuddered as the dark matter cannon thrummed to life, its maw glowing with an otherworldly light. Brian's hand hovered over the firing control, the weight of the galaxy pressing down on him. In that moment, he knew that whatever happened next, there would be no going back. The course of history would be forever changed, for better or for worse. With a final steadying breath, he made his choice and pressed the button, unleashing the fury of the dark matter cannon upon the Tsenkethi fleet. The die was cast, and the future of the galaxy hung in the balance. Brian's hand hovered over the firing control, the fate of the galaxy weighing heavily on his shoulders. In that moment of clarity, a realization struck him like a bolt of lightning. Using the dark matter cannon would only perpetuate the cycle of violence and mistrust between humans and other alien races. It would be a declaration of war, not a path to peace. He turned to Primus, his voice steady despite the chaos raging around them. Open a channel to the Tsenkethi ships. We're going to try something different. The android hesitated for a moment, its damaged circuit struggling to process the request. Then, with a nod, it complied. Channel open, Commander. Brian took a deep breath, then spoke, his words carried across the void to the Senkethi Commander. This is Commander Brian James of the Galactic Council. I know you're here to take the Prometheus, but there's something you need to know. He paused, gathering his thoughts. The Prometheus was part of a classified human mission to establish a secret outpost called Sanctuary. It was meant to be a haven for our people, in case of war or catastrophe. But the ship never made it. Because I believe we have a chance to change the course of history, Brian replied, his voice growing stronger. The technology and knowledge on this ship could benefit all of us, not just humans. I'm proposing a truce. There was a long, tense silence. Then the Tsenkethi commander spoke again, his tone guarded but curious. What are you suggesting? We share the Prometheus secrets, Brian said, laying his cards on the table. Your people and mine working together to unlock its potential. In exchange, we put an end to this conflict and start building a real, lasting peace. As he spoke, Zephyr's voice suddenly cut in over the comms, urgent and excited. Commander, I'm intercepting a transmission from the Council. They've uncovered evidence of a conspiracy within the Tsenkethi government to sabotage the peace with humans and other races. The Tsenkethi commander's voice returned, now tinged with shock and anger. What? That's impossible! But even as he spoke, the proof was transmitted to his ship, irrefutable and damning. The commander fell silent, the weight of the revelation sinking in. It seems we have a common enemy, Brian said softly, seizing the moment, one that threatens us all. We can stand together against them or fall divided. There was another long pause. Then the Tsenkethi commander's voice returned, heavy with resignation and a glimmer of hope. Very well, Commander James. We accept your truce. Let us bring those responsible for this treachery to justice and forge a new path forward. As the Tenkethi ships stood down and the battle subsided, Brian felt a surge of relief and purpose wash over him. The road ahead would be long and difficult, but for the first time in centuries there was a real chance for change. With Primus at his side and the Prometheus under their control, Brian and his team began the delicate process of negotiating a new alliance with the Tenkethi. Zephyr, now fully committed to the cause, worked tirelessly to unravel the conspiracy within his own government.
And at the heart of it all, the Prometheus stood as a symbol of what could be achieved when species put aside their differences and worked towards a common goal. A beacon of hope, shining brightly against the darkness of the void. As the Prometheus and its allied ships ventured deeper into the heart of the Phantom Zone, an eerie stillness settled over the crew. The once lively chatter of the bridge fell silent, replaced by the tense hum of sensors scanning the void for any sign of danger. Suddenly alarms blared across the ships, shattering the uneasy quiet. Multiple contacts closing fast, Arya shouted from her console, her fingers flying across the controls. Unknown signatures, not matching anything in our databases. The view screens flickered to life, revealing a sight that sent chills down the spines of even the most seasoned warriors. A fleet of alien vessels, their hulls a twisted amalgamation of organic and mechanical components, surged towards them like a swarm of predators descending upon their prey. Voidwalkers, Primus said, its voice tinged with a mix of fear and recognition a race of technologically advanced nomads who have haunted the Phantom Zone for centuries, preying on the lost and the vulnerable. Brian gripped the armrests of his chair, his knuckles turning white as he stared at the approaching horde. What do they want with us? he demanded, his eyes never leaving the screen. The Prometheus, Primus replied, its tone grave. They can sense its power, the advanced technologies hidden within its ancient hull, they seek to claim it for themselves, to strip it down, and integrate its secrets into their own ships. Zephyr hissed, his scales bristling with barely contained rage. We cannot let that happen, he growled, his clawed hand tightening around his weapon. The Prometheus is the key to maintaining the balance of power in the galaxy. If the Voidwalkers take it... Brian shook his head, his jaw clenched with grim determination. That's not going to happen, he said, his voice hard as steel. All ships, battle stations, prepare to engage the enemy. The Prometheus shuddered as its weapon systems came online, the hum of its dark matter core rising to a fever pitch. The Endeavour and the Tenkethi warship fell into formation beside it, their own guns bristling with deadly intent. As the Voidwalker fleet closed in, the Void erupted with the fury of a thousand suns. Energy beams and missiles crisscrossed the darkness, the hulls of the ships buckling and twisting under the onslaught. The Prometheus shook violently as it took hit after hit, its shield straining to absorb the relentless barrage. In the midst of the chaos, Voidwalker boarding craft slammed into the Prometheus hull, disgorging hordes of nightmarish creatures onto the ancient warship's decks. Brian and his team fought desperately to repel the boarders, their weapons flashing in the dimly lit corridors. Zephyr roared with primal fury as he charged into the fray, his claws ripping through the Voidwalker's twisted flesh, but even his savage strength was not enough to stem the tide. A searing bolt of energy caught him in the chest, sending him crashing to the deck, his lifeblood pooling beneath him. Brian rushed to the fallen Senkethi's side, his heart pounding in his ears. He cradled Zephyr's head in his lap, trying to staunch the flow of blood with trembling hands. You fool! Zephyr rasped, his voice barely above a whisper. You should be fighting, not wasting time on me. Brian shook his head, tears stinging his eyes. I'm not leaving you behind, he said fiercely, even as the battle raged around them. We're in this together, remember. As the Voidwalkers pressed their attack, Primus suddenly let out a cry of recognition. It was them, the android said, its voice filled with a mixture of horror and realization. The Voidwalkers were the ones who attacked the Prometheus all those centuries ago. They were the ones who caused my original disappearance. Brian's eyes widened, the pieces of the puzzle finally falling into place. The Voidwalkers had been hunting the Prometheus for centuries, seeking to claim its secrets for their own. And now they had finally caught up to their prey. With a heavy heart, Brian made his way to the Prometheus's engineering section, where Primus was frantically working to overload the ship's dark matter core. The android looked up as Brian entered, its eyes filled with a grim determination. There's only one way to stop them, Primus said, its voice steady despite the chaos raging around them. We have to create a singularity, a black hole that will consume the Voidwalker fleet, and us along with it. 
Brian nodded, his jaw set with resolve. He knew what had to be done. With a final desperate effort, he and Primus channeled all of their remaining power into the core, pushing it past its limits. The Prometheus shuddered and groaned as the singularity began to form, its hull buckling and twisting under the immense gravitational forces. The Voidwalker ships, caught in the inexorable pull of the black hole, were dragged screaming into the abyss, their twisted forms vanishing into the darkness. Brian closed his eyes, his thoughts turning to his crew, his friends, and the alliance he had fought so hard to forge. He knew that his sacrifice would not be in vain, that the Prometheus would become a symbol of the unity and resilience of the galaxy's many peoples. As the singularity consumed the Prometheus, Brian and Primus disappeared into the void, their bodies and minds merging with the fabric of space and time itself. They had given everything to protect the galaxy from the Voidwalker's threat, and in doing so, had ensured that their legacy would endure for generations to come. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.